Good afternoon, everybody, uneducated economist here. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about FTX. Some people have asked me about this crypto exchange going belly up and if this is going to basically kill the whole cryptocurrency market. I don't believe that's the case at all. Now, it may take the price of Bitcoin and some of the other cryptocurrencies down for a little while, but it's only a matter of time before they will return to their all-time highs and then explode even higher. These exchanges, I don't know how else to put it, but they are all fraudulent. Like, I don't want to call them out as being fraudulent because some of them may be really trying to do it right. But for the most part, all of them are, are fraudulent. They don't really have the cryptocurrencies that they, that they say they have or the ones that you deposit with them. They don't have those, right? So when there's an issue, when people start pulling out their money or pulling out the cryptos, they just don't have enough to back it. Like even look at the article that I leave down in the description. And because it's not surprising to me. FTX exchange, like they had claimed to have like five and a half billion dollars in assets, like in crypto assets, they actually had less than a million dollars worth, right? That's what the bankruptcy filings are showing. Like I'm not going to get into it because I've seen so many of these exchanges fail that if you have locked your money or your cryptocurrencies or at least a vast amount of your money into one of these crypto exchanges, you are asking for punishment. You really are. Now, I watched Mt. Gox fail. Like, I was following cryptocurrencies way back in the day, and I watched Mt. Gox fail. Like, they had taken on Bitcoin that didn't exist. Like, there was people who were generating this false Bitcoin out there, and they were trying to facilitate the trades ahead of time before they realized the verification of these Bitcoins did not exist. Like, they, these Bitcoins were not real. But by the time they were figuring this all out, it was too late. And when Mt. Gox failed, it took Bitcoin to zero. I mean, it was worth nothing. Like, there was nobody out there who had an exchange for Bitcoin. You could not trade it for money anywhere. Like, there might have been somebody out there who would have given you money for Bitcoin, but there was no exchange that you could really use at the time. It was zero. Bitcoin had failed to be a currency at that moment. But it didn't fail the protocol. Like, the Bitcoin program was still functioning. People could still transact in Bitcoin. It just didn't have any exchange value to the dollar because there was no exchange to, to use, right? So after that, all these exchanges really started to pop up, right? And I fell into one of them myself. This is how I know like how these exchanges are not, not necessarily the legitimate places that you can park your money that you can park your crypto now i'm not trying to like call out any single one of them i mean there might be legitimate cryptocurrency exchanges out there that you are using and i'm not trying to knock it or say anything like that but when you put your cryptocurrencies into an exchange like that like a crypto exchange you you are really like taking your chances because if you don't have that private key you're giving it up to a third party who may not allow you to log back in. And that's what happened to me with Cripsa, with Cripsy. Now, the Cripsy Exchange, this is where I had actually heard about Cripsy Exchange through the purchasing of um, Quark, right? It was, it was this weird cryptocurrency that I think um, Ben Still was trying to, to push. And I was just curious about it. So I was like, okay, how do I get this Quark, right? And the way I was going about it was through Cripsy, right? So you go onto this exchange. I went and got some Bitcoin, right? So I had opened up a, an account, a Coinbase account, got some Bitcoin, sent it over to Cripsy and was flipping it for all these other, other cryptocurrencies out there, all these alternative ones. And Dogecoin happened to be one of them. In fact, I had 125 Doge with Cripsy when one day I just couldn't log in anymore. And it was over. Like I could not get to my cryptocurrencies anymore. And that 125 Doge, which at the time was only worth a handful of dollars, you know, maybe 10 bucks or something. I don't even know what it was worth at the time. It wasn't very much. Well, I lost access to all that. And the FBI class action lawsuit says, hey, you know, you can join in on this. But I had like literally like $10, $20 worth of cryptocurrency with them at the time. Now, of course, that would be a lot more today had I had the actual cryptocurrencies, but at the time it just didn't seem significant enough for me to actually get involved with it. I probably should have just for the experience of it, but I didn't do it. 
what I did get from the experience of it is that these exchanges are not a safe place to put your cryptocurrencies, not even remotely close to being a safe place. It is a nice place to go and flip your cryptos and say maybe work some um, you know, day trading moves or something like that, but anytime you're ever keeping it there for any significant amount of time and thinking of it as a safe place to park it, that is incorrect. It is, it is not a safe place to, to keep your cryptocurrencies. Now, with that being said, I do feel more confident in, say, places like Coinbase. Now, Coinbase has been in the game a really long time, and I have been using Coinbase myself and have never had any issues with it. Now, I've had heard of other people saying that they weren't able to, say, sell their cryptocurrencies, like their accounts got locked or something like that during maybe significant moves, like some really volatile moves inside of the cryptocurrency market, they weren't able to necessarily log in or use their accounts during those times. But I've never had a problem either purchasing or selling Bitcoin using Coinbase or even sending cryptocurrencies around. So when it comes to like storing your cryptocurrencies, if you are not saving the private key yourself or putting it on a hard wallet, like a ledger or something like that, <clears throat> then you're taking your chances by putting it in with a third party. Now, if it is going to be a third party, put it in with a reputable, reputable, like third party place like Coinbase. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, I don't care if you use Coinbase or not. That's not really here nor there. That's where I happen to use it because I have, you know, been using them for a very long time and never had any issues with it. So I think Coinbase personally is probably the number one place that is going to be where you could put your cryptocurrencies as far as a third party and feel somewhat safe about it. Now, also, I mean, I'm not trying to just promote like Coinbase because, you know, whatever, but I like the idea that what Coinbase is doing because they also have the tokens that are involved. And now this is something that I really have to think about because right now the cryptocurrencies are really taking a hit. Coinbase stock, I mean, they their IPO from where they opened up, like the initial public offering to where they are now has dropped like, I don't know, 87% or something like that. So their stock is in the toilet. Cryptos are in the toilet. There's so much negativity going on about cryptocurrencies that it really makes you question whether or not these places are safe or if it's a good investment. And I don't really think of cryptocurrencies as an investment. It's more of a speculation. But when you think about when it is that you are supposed to buy in, you buy when there's blood in the streets. You buy when everybody is crying about how they lost everything they have. You cry when, or <laughs> you don't cry. You buy <laughs> when everybody else is like, in pain, suffering, screaming bad news, all that stuff, that's when you buy in. In fact, I, I wish I could find the article. I had one like saved for a long time, but I cannot find it now. But it was an article, it was a CNBC article talking about how you buy Bitcoin when the news about Bitcoin is bad. When it's at its worst, that's when you buy Bitcoin. And when the best news comes out about Bitcoin, that's when you sell. And this was an indicator that somebody had come up with as far as the news articles relating to when you are supposed to buy and sell Bitcoin. So when the when the news is at its worst, when you're hearing the worst about news about Bitcoin, the most discouraging stuff out there, that's when you buy it. And then when you hear the best positivity, all the like awesome things that Bitcoin is going to do and how everybody's going to be using Bitcoin and it's the greatest thing in the world. That's when you get out. That's when you sell because that seems to be when the news is indicating the buy and sell positions that you should be in. So when the news is at its worst, you get in. And just to let you know, I bought $50 with the Bitcoin yesterday and I bought $50 with the Coinbase yesterday as well. Just to be clear that I am not trying to promote anything. I don't think that you should like go out and buy Coinbase or Bitcoin. I just want to be clear that I'm taking that position just because it's not a very big position and I don't plan on dumping a bunch of money into it, but doing some dollar cost averaging as this continues to go down. And hopefully I hit the bottom somewhere and recognize that bottom and buy in even more because I feel that not only is Coinbase going to be a legitimate company going into the future, but I also feel that Bitcoin is going to definitely be some sort of, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be like a store of value, but it is definitely going to be in play within the banking system. And that's the, that's what I feel. 
However, the actual transactions and things that take place throughout the economy, I think that's going to be done more on tokenizing, like whether it's on the Ethereum, you know, platform or, you know, whether or not stuff like Stellar Lumens takes over and starts doing transactions and stuff like that. There is a lot of alternative cryptocurrencies that are out there that are taking place. But when it comes to this FTX exchange failing, not a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal for some people out there and it's a big deal for the market in general. But it's not a big deal for the longevity of cryptocurrencies and, and you know whether or not it's actually going to be something that's legitimate in the future. Um, you know, I have to say, like in that article, I think it's the CNBC article. They basically say in there, unless you know this thing fades away and goes nothing, it's going to continue to go and get bigger. And this tokenizing isn't going to go away. Like the digital platform for everything, tokenizing everything. All commodities, all services, all everything. Everything's going to be on the is going to be on the digital platforms, digital blockchain, track, trace, tax, all that stuff. It's happening. You can see it happen now. All right, I got to go to work. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.